Let's create a new NX workspace. It's going to be a workspace for building various online stores, and I'll use the React preset. And my first tab in this workspace will be a store for selling bikes. And we get options for various CSS formats. I'll choose SAS, and I'll say no to NX Cloud for now. We'll enable that and see what it's all about in a bit. Once that's done creating the workspace, I'll CD into it and open VS Code. Hmm, a bunch of files in here. Let's open up apps and aha, we see our bike store in here. It seems to have a just config and linting all set up. Interesting. It also has a component pre-populated and importing the style sheet format we selected earlier. Looks like a fully functioning React app to me. Let's serve it using the NX CLI. If we click on the URL, it seems to work. It has the name of our store, everything is good. Interesting. Let's bring in some more power to this workspace and add the next JS plugin. One of the features these plugins bring us is generators, source code generators that we can use to quickly bootstrap a new app in our workspace, like we're about to do now. Let's use the plugin to generate a new Next.js app, a blog. If we open apps now, we see a blog app in there. This is a fully functional app that follows the Next.js specification with a public folder and pages. And then if we want to serve this, we don't have to remember it's a Next.js app. We don't have to use and learn the Next.js CLI with its special options. We just want to serve the blog app. And yes, it will use Next.js APIs under the hood when it does this, but I don't have to worry about that if I don't need to. And if I click on the link, I'll see my changes in the browser. When we generated these apps, we got some pre-configured just unit tests for our top level components. They're even using modern tooling like the React testing library. Then we can use the NX CLI to test our blog or the other app, Bike Store. That's a small weight of my chest, knowing that I don't have to worry about configuring Jest or even wiring in my components. I am immediately productive and able to start on writing proper tests. And we can use another NX command, run many, to tell it to build all the projects in my workspace. Even though build means different things for our two different apps and different frameworks and build tools are invoked for each one, it's all been abstracted away in this common keyword. Imagine somebody from DevOps, the moment they realize they're dealing with an NX workspace, they know they don't have to worry about whether they configured and passed all the different options correctly for linting, testing, or building for all the different apps. NX keeps it all consistent. And we can see all the production assets that just appeared for the two apps right here in this. You'll also notice that when NX generated our main apps, we got some other apps in here as well. These are ready to go Cypress tests targeting our production apps. And we can run these with NX end to end, then the name of our project. And I'll pass the dash dash watch flag so it stays open. And we see Cypress opening up our actual app and doing its thing. But why have two different apps in here right next to each other? especially if different teams might work on them. Should we not have them in completely different folders and repositories? Let's use a different plugin, Narl React, which came by default with a workspace to generate a component library. And I'll call it header. Now, if we look in the libs folder, we'll see a header component with some styles and tests pre-assembled and all wired together. And of course we can test or lint this new component if we want to. But we can also, if I go to my bike store, import it in my top level component and then use it. I can also go to my blog's top level component and import it here as well. Let's serve these two apps in different ports. And if we open up the browser, we should see the common header showing up in both. And you'll notice the import looks like we somehow installed the library from NPM that our organization published, but this is all done behind the scenes by NX in this root level TS config. And that's how you can think about libs. They're like your local NPM packages, easy to create and update with no need to publish anywhere. 
when it's this easy to share code, functions, and components between teams and their apps, developers will do it more often and take initiative in maintaining your growing architecture. Speaking of sharing components, let's add the Storybook plugin and generate a new Storybook configuration for the header project. I'll say yes to all these questions and you'll see what they do in a bit. Going back to our component lib, we notice this new Storybook Stories file with our header component all hooked up, imported, and ready to be configured. And to see this running, NX Storybook, which project's header? And if we click on the link, we can see our header component running in Storybook. You can work on this in isolation now without having to launch a full app around it. So we've actually made a start on a design system for our workspace. And when we said yes to one of the earlier questions, the Storybook plugin added some Cypress tests in the apps folder that can test our component in the browser like a real user. When you make it this fun for teams to follow best practices, use modern tooling, write tests, and work using design systems, they'll naturally start taking ownership of doing these things more often. And there's so much more we can explore. There's a React Native plugin for bootstrapping ready-to-go React Native apps, or even a Gatsby app. You can even generate backend Express APIs. But I'll leave it up to you to try it out. Just type NX list to see all the plugins you can use in your workspace. Oh, and all these commands we've been running, you don't have to remember them. If you prefer a UI, there's an NX console plugin for VS Code where you can view projects in your workspace and you can even see what all the available commands are and get guided via dropdowns and inputs on how to run them. But given that it's so easy to create all these apps and libs, you can imagine how this workspace can start growing quickly. Eventually, running tests on all my projects in the workspace will take too long. So let me commit everything now and you'll see why. If I just make a change to my bike store and save the file, then run this command, NX affected dependency graph. Check this out. This prints out a graph of everything I changed since the last time I committed. I changed the bike store and because it's Cypress tests depend on it, they're also red. I can also show all the other unchanged packages for the full project dependency diagram. I can clearly see that the bike store, the blog, and the end-to-end -end test for the header depend on the header lib. But this isn't just useful for drawing up-to-date diagrams of our dependencies. We can take advantage of this intricate knowledge of the dependency tree, and instead of linting everything, I can just lint the projects that have been affected by my change since the last commit. I can also compare against any other commit I want, like latest origin master, or even the last five commits. And this of course works with end-to-end -end tests, building, and testing. This makes it so easy to build CI systems that scale regardless of how crazy your workspace gets. And our test of course is failing because we did make a change to the title. Now, when I run any command in NX, like building, it's gonna start doing some heavy computation work to build my project. And we can verify it's been built by looking in dist. But let me remove the whole dist folder. All my production assets are gone now. And now I'll just run the build command again. But unlike last time, it completed almost instantly now. So wait, did it actually do anything this time? If we look in dist, which we had just removed, we can see all the built assets are back in there. So the command worked. Turns out, because we are in an NX workspace, all of this has been retrieved from the cache. NX noticed that I'm running a command I've run before against the same set of files. In other words, I'm trying to build the exact same source code a second time. So NX knows that, and it just pulls the previous terminal output and built assets from the local cache. And caching works with absolutely any command in your workspace, testing, linting, end-to-end. -end. It works if I use run many, 
or affected. Just by using the NX CLI, you're going to start noticing your workspace tasks becoming much faster. We can take this further and install the NX Cloud plugin. And I'll just initialize it in the workspace. That's it. I've just enabled distributed computation caching. Now imagine I commit and push these changes up to my repo. Now I'll make sure to run a build in here again so it gets pushed to my cloud cache. Now when my colleague Anna comes in to work in the morning and she pulls my changes and then does a build, she'll just instantly pull my results from the shared cloud cache. She won't have to learn any new commands, do any sort of setup locally. She just had to pull latest and run the build, just like that. And a bonus feature we get with NX Cloud is that we can now enable the GitHub bot on our repository, which gives us full reports of what happened on our CI, which commands failed and why. And we can even copy this link up here and share with our teammates to get some help. I really encourage you to check out the NX docs, join our office hours where you can ask questions live to NX core team members. And there's even a very active NX community Slack where you can chat to other NX users.